Welcome to today's Research Business Daily Report, where we have an interesting question that's been raised about students being recruited to fill analytics and data science positions, and whether that's a good thing. Then the Huffington Post says, contrary to long-held expert opinions, pollsters probably can't blame their shortcomings just on people refusing to answer their telephones. Our BDR is sponsored today and this week by L&E Research, where recruiting is their passion. And as a result, they say that quality respondents and quality information, it is that simple. Linda Birch, executive recruiter for Birchworks, blogged on business2community.com about students being strongly encouraged to alter their career goals in order to take advantage of huge demand for analytics and data science positions. But her point of view raised the question about whether that is actually a good thing. Birch said some major business media is awash with splashy headlines about the enormous demand for and high salaries available from analytics and data science positions. However, she wonders if parents and their kids, in turning away from their real passions to take advantage of that analytics and data science demand, is a good thing. Is this influx, she asks, of professionals into the field healthy and sustainable? The backdrop behind Birch's rhetorical query is what she has found in the last year or so, and that is a drop in the median age for predictive analytics professionals. Birch said she believes it is important for people to follow their passion, not just what is best available to them. And she commented, quote, something to consider is whether some of the increase in students pursuing math-related degrees or students choosing the hot career du jour, not necessarily because it is actually what they want to do, end of quote. Moving on, the Huffington Post staff reporter and polling director, Ariel Edwards-Levy, and senior polling editor Natalie Jackson wrote an extensive blog that explored how much blame for bad polling can and should be directed at the shrinking proportion of the American citizenry that is willing to answer the telephone to take a poll. They wrote that, quote, the proliferation of text messages, emails, and social media is relegating unsolicited phone calls mostly to the realm of telemarketing, end of quote. The steadily disappearing landline phone and reliance by almost half of the population on a mobile phone is certainly making polling less efficient. In 2012, Pew Research estimated a 9% response rate for its polling. Compare that with the nearly 40% rate in the 1990s, and the only reaction you can utter is, ouch. But SSRS EVP and Chief Methodologist David Dutwin claims non-response bias, namely whether people who are willing to respond have opinions that are really different from those that do not answer the phone, is a factor. Dutwin pointed to data published in the Washington Post that showed the accuracy of several major national surveys despite the drastic drop in response rates. Pew Research Center Director of Survey Results Scott Keeter says there is some non-response bias among less educated people, people of color, and less politically active individuals. However, most of those biases, he claims, can be corrected through demographic weighting. Edwards, Levy, and Jackson highlight the comment last summer from Professor of Political Science Cliff Zuckin, who said, strangely, for some reasons that no one really understands, well-done probability samples seem to have retained their representative character despite the drops in response rates. Just a hair less certain about all of this is Kaiser Family Foundation Executive Director for Public Opinion and Survey Research, Molly Ann Brody, who observed that the jury's out on whether it is related to survey error. Obviously, this is all to be continued. That's your Research Business Daily Report, where we've been sponsored by L&E Research, where recruiting is their passion, and as a result, they have a belief that a quality respondent and quality information, it is that simple. L&E Research has also formulated some interesting ideas about putting all the available pieces together, both those that are readily available and those that are emerging, so that you can hit the goal of getting a clear picture of the whole truth in your research project. We have the link 
to the l e research think piece that presents those possibilities. And believe me, it's definitely worth your time to take a look at it. We have a link for it in today's email to subscribers. It's also in the description box underneath the video. We hope you have a great research day. And of course, we hope that we'll see you back here tomorrow.